Thank you for stopping by my water engineering channel and welcome to another thrilling and fascinating video. Now in this video, we'll discuss about the chlorine gas dosing system and water chlorination. Some of you may already be familiar with how a chlorination system operates. And that's good. However, in this video, we'll go through the main components of a chlorine gas system in detail. Then let's begin. River, lake, and groundwater raw water can include bacteria. Even though not all microbes are dangerous to human health, some of them have the potential to make people sick. Waterborne diseases can be contracted by consuming it when pathogens in the water are spread through a drinking water distribution system. Water that is safe for human consumption is produced by procedures like coagulation, sedimentation, filtration, and chlorination. One of the many techniques for sanitizing water is chlorination. This technique has been in use for more than a century and is still in use today. While adding chlorine to water is a necessary step in the chlorination process, pure chlorine is not always required. Depending on the needed pH and the storage options, chlorination can also be done using chemicals that contain chlorine. It's possible to employ a variety of chlorine-containing compounds. Chlorine gas, sodium hypochlorite, and calcium hypochlorite are the three forms of chlorine that are most frequently used to treat water. Chlorine gas is greenish-yellow in hue and heavier than air. Due to the chemical changes that take place when it is added to water, its high toxicity make it an excellent water disinfectant, but also a danger to anyone who handles it. When used to purify drinking water, chlorine gas is no more hazardous to people than other forms of chlorine are. The most popular form of chlorine for municipal water systems is chlorine gas, which is actually sold as an amber-colored compressed liquid. It is the least expensive form of chlorine. Calcium hypochlorite is the second chemical form of chlorine. It's a white, corrosive substance that is produced from chlorine gas and is available in tablet or granular powder form. Calcium hypochlorite raises it instead of lowering the pH of the water like chlorine gas does. The third form, sodium hypochlorite, is a chlorine-containing chemical that is most commonly associated with home bleach. The simplest to handle of all the varieties of chlorine, it's a light yellow liquid with a limited shelf life. Additionally, raising the pH of the water being treated is sodium hypochlorite. Compared to calcium hypochlorite or chlorine gas, this form of chlorine requires a lower concentration of chlorine to disinfect water. Currently, chlorine gas is used by about two-thirds of drinking water systems. So we will describe the chlorine gas dosing mechanism in this video. The vacuum regulator, the automated switch cover, the chlorine gas metering system, and the ejector are the main elements of a gas chlorination system. The vacuum regulator unit keeps the chlorination under constant vacuum. To reduce the length of pressurized chlorine pipe, it should be placed as near as feasible to the chlorine supply container. It may be mounted on the wall or the cylinder. The type of mounting for the chlorometer is determined by the maximum chlorine flow rate necessary. It should be directly installed to the bottle for flow rates under 2 kg per hour. It should be wall mounted for speeds more than 10 kg per hour. Additionally, it can be directly fixed on a bottle or wall mounted for flow rates greater than 2 kg per hour and less than 10 kg per hour. The additional equipment has a flow indicator that shows the mass flow of chlorine gas in a storage tank empty indication. To accommodate different needs, the manufacturers also provide additional accessories including adjustment valves, manometers, and electrical status indications. This guarantees accurate metering and exact configuration. The switchover system is the second element. For continuous chlorination, it converts the chlorine supply from an empty chlorine source to a full chlorine source. It's entirely vacuum operated. The wall-mounted automated vacuum switchover module must be toggle operated and spring loaded. The switchover are made of molded plastic that can be used with wet or dry gas, and all of the springs are made of tantalum alloy. The chlorine gas metering system is the third piece of equipment. It is positioned in order to provide a visible indication of the chlorine gas supply rate between the vacuum regulator and the ejector. 
A manual rate control valve will be put after the flow meter tube in every gas chlorination system. Also possible is the installation of an automatic control valve between the flow meter tube and the ejector. Differential pressure regulators are optional and can also be added. They are intended to maintain vacuum. A chlorine gas system's objective is to inject chlorine into the water at a rate that will keep the appropriate residual amount of chlorine in the process water constant. To maintain the desired residual in the treated process water, the chlorine feed rate must be adjusted when the water flow rate and water quality change. In systems where both the process water flow and the water quality are consistent, manual feed rate control is an option. It is advisable to utilize an automatic control system if the water flow rate or water quality are variable. The ejector is the final part. It's a mechanical mechanism that controls the system by creating a vacuum and combining chlorine gas and water. It consists of the following components. Check the venturi and valve nozzle body. Manufacturers create lots of different ejectors. To determine the water flow and pressure needs for each ejector, Consult the nozzle performance charts and curves that can be found in the manufacturer's instruction manuals. Here is a nozzle ejector curve illustration. Gas chlorination systems also include the following equipment, which I can go over in more detail in my upcoming video if you're interested. Chlorine gas tanks, booster pumps, residual chlorine measuring devices, gas leak detectors, lifting accessories for chlorine gas tanks, and flexible connection hoses. Let's now study the functioning of the chlorine gas dosing system. In order to create the vacuum and combine water with gas chlorine, the booster pump draws water from the storage tank and feeds it to the ejector. The residual chlorine analyzer installed at the tank outflow controls this pump. The vacuum dosing regulator on the chlorine gas tank is opened by the negative pressure created in the injector, allowing chlorine gas to enter the treated water. Flow meters show the flow of chlorine gas and adjustment valves regulate the metering volume. The switchover automatically transfers the chlorine flow from the empty chlorine source to the full chlorine source once the first cylinder is empty. Until the current chlorine supply runs out, the system won't transition into a new one. Here are some images of a chlorine gas dosing system installation in a water treatment facility. As you can see, standard chlorine gas systems use a variety of equipment. Additional parts are utilized for large-scale systems including evaporators pressure, lowering valves, pressure switchovers, metering systems, and related room equipment. Okay folks, thanks for watching. Please comment below and let me know what you think. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about it. Till then, goodbye.